If you've been looking for something to top off the product selection in your print-on-demand shop, you may want to consider hats. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a couple of embroidered hat samples from Printify, and then we'll talk about some niche ideas and pricing for your print-on-demand shop. Before we jump in, I wanna mention that the sponsor of this video is Printify, and they provided these samples so that we could do this review. All right, so we're talking hats today, and we're specifically gonna take a look at the beanie style or winter style hat available on Printify from print provider MyLocker in the US, and I think, I think MyLocker is the only print provider that offers embroidery, at least in the US. We're gonna check on that right now. I was right. Now we definitely could have done a video that included all different varieties of hats because the beanie style is not the only style that Printify offers and it's also not the only style that just my locker on Printify offers. But being that it's currently fall at the time of recording this, we're going into some colder months, I thought it would be good to focus on the winter style hats. Because this is the time of year to get these added to your shop if you're interested so that they can sell during the colder months, especially in the US. It depends on your geography and where your customers are a little bit, but in the US, these are gonna sell mostly in the fall and winter. If we just start off with the quality of these hats in general before talking about the print, which in this case is the embroidery, uh, they both, I would say, are very acceptable quality. Neither one has any type of loose threads or, oh, I found one minor defect. There's one really long string on the pom-pom. The material is soft and it's quite stretchy, so there really shouldn't be any problem as far as fit goes for any adult. Let's talk about the embroidery now. So starting with the regular non-pom-pom hat, our black example here, the first thing that jumped out at me when I got both of these samples is that I do think that this has a pretty generous size printable or embroidery area. Um, I've definitely seen some other embroidery print-on-demand products where the area that can be embroidered is really, really small. And so a lot of designs just don't work well when you have to make them that small. But I was very pleasantly surprised with how large it looks in person. And I, I think that this is a nice sized embroidery area. I also think the text embroidery came out very well. I have no concerns really with it. There are, you know, maybe just a couple of spots where some of the black hat material shows uh, through the white text, but nothing concerning really. And the heart area is a solid red nice and filled in. Now the one detail that I, I chose this design for a couple reasons. I wanted one that had text and I also wanted one that had a little bit of small detail. And the center cutout shape in the heart is actually the shape of the state of Oregon. Maybe kind of if you look really close to it, you would notice that that's supposed to be Oregon, uh, but it doesn't come out with super crisp lines. I honestly didn't expect it to. It was more of a test than anything else to see how that would come out. So I'm not really disappointed in the way it came out. I just wanted to have at least one example to show that you kind of need to watch how small your details are and how fine things get when you do embroidery designs. Now on the pom-pom one, I wanted to go for something different. As you can see, I went with the super bright neon pink color that they have. And I went with a print file that was a very colorful neon-ish type print. And I wanted to see how that color would translate into embroidery because one of the things that's important with embroidery for you to be aware of is that there's obviously a more limited number of colors. We're not blending inks to color match, you know, a print file using complex software. We have physical threads and we only have a certain number of colors available to pick from. It's definitely not a good idea to do things like gradients or anything like that. I'll put an image of the print file up on the screen right next to a close up of the embroidery so you can kind of see how the colors of the print file translated over into the thread colors that were chosen. But again, relative to my expectations of how it might come out, I'm actually pretty pleasantly surprised with this one too. It is too hot in here for a winter hat. So overall, I really have no complaints about the quality of the hats themselves or of the way the embroidery came out from my locker. In just a moment, we're gonna talk about pricing and we'll jump into the Printify catalog. And we'll also talk about a couple potential niche ideas, but we also wanna talk a little bit more about the print files and colors and just generally some things to keep in mind when you are creating your designs for hats. So let's hop over to the computer and we'll talk about that now. 
All right, so before we take a look at the pricing and a couple niche kind of ideas for your embroidered beanie style hats, let's just talk about the design process and some key differences here. Printify does have a design guide for embroidery and a link to this page is in the description. And this page is very helpful in terms of knowing what to avoid and what to do when you're making your designs or converting your designs over for embroidery. And one of the keys that you're probably going to want to refer back to is the thread color reference. So if we just take a look at that, they are going to provide the 16 thread colors that are available for use with the hex codes that you need so that you can alter your design files to match up with these. Now, they also try to help you out and include a lot of this information in the actual design editor view when you are making one of these embroidered hats. And they have a template available as well that shows right up here on the top of the screen. We're in the editor for the regular adult unisex beanie. And if you download this template and then open that up, I've got it opened in Photopia. You can also use Photoshop or any program that works with PSD files. And the template has the color palette in it as well. So you can use your eyedropper to sample these colors and match them up or replace in your design this way as well. And if you use an editing software like Photoshop, GIMP, or Photopia, you can also sample each of these colors, save them as color swatches, and then save a collection of color swatches to preload into your software so that you always have it. In fact, I went ahead and saved a color swatch set of all 16 of these colors, and I linked to it in the description so you can download it and then load it up into Photoshop or your editing software. And to load that, all you do is locate the swatches tab in your editing software and then use the option to either load or import the ACO file. Select the printify embroidery.aco file and we'll bring up all 16 of the color swatches available for embroidery on Printify. And again, as I mentioned, they give you a lot of information right here on the design editor view. So one of the things we also need to know is the file dimensions, and they give us that right here. They're indicating that the print area size is 1200 by 720. So that's considerably smaller than what we're used to working with as far as t-shirts, sweatshirts, and that kind of thing. But if you have a larger print file that really doesn't require any editing, and there's no problem with the color matching or anything like that, then you can simply just use it in here and scale it down to fit in the print area. And if you don't do the color matching, or plan for the, the thread colors, what will happen is what we saw with that neon pink uh, sample that we looked at earlier, where they will simply match the colors in the print file to the closest thread color for you. And that's not a big deal if they're simply matching a super light gray over to white and you kind of expected that. But it can be a big deal if you are thinking you're going to get something like a teal green and it just comes out blue. And that's exactly what we had with this print file. I've opened the boombox print file in Photopia and the way that came out, remember, was blue and red for those teal and pink colors. Now, it just so happened to come out looking pretty good, in my opinion, on the hat that we received, but you don't necessarily want to take that gamble. So the best thing to do is to convert your colors to make sure that you know how it's going to come out. And using this boombox graphic as an example, what we would need to do from there is basically just look at these color swatches and decide which ones do we want to replace in our print file so that we get the best result. Now in Photopia, I'm just going to select the color swatch that I think they used, which I think was the one called Columbia Blue, kind of the lighter blue. And then I'm gonna use the paint bucket tool to fill in the teal green areas. And this is the color that they used when they actually made it. So I would have known in advance that this is how it was going to turn out if I had done this matching myself. I would also, if this was my final design that I wanted to use, I would also consider getting rid of some of those really small, fine details, just because we know they're not going to come out super clear. And if I really wanted an image of a cassette in the center, I might just go to one of my graphic sources and see if I can find a more simple graphic of a cassette with less fine detail in it, and then add my own simplified graphic of a cassette. So that's kind of the process you need to go through if you are using an existing graphic and you want to convert that over into an embroidery file to use for one of these embroidered hats or any other embroidered product. Of course, if you're creating the design yourself from scratch, say a text-based design to put on a hat or something like that, then you can just create the design from the beginning only using these colors and then you won't have to convert anything when you're done. All right, let's talk about pricing of the two samples that we took a look at earlier. So we'll start with the regular unisex knit beanie. That's the one made by Port and Company and available from my locker on Printify. And this one comes with a Printify premium price of $11.30 and shipping at $4.50 in the US. And it is currently available in 10 different colors. So there's a pretty wide range available there. 
Now, if you don't have a Printify Premium account, these prices will be slightly higher. If you're interested in checking out Printify Premium, I have a whole video that talks about how it is absolutely worth it, even if you don't have a huge volume of orders every month. I'll put a link to that in the corner and in the description. And I also have a coupon code for you to get 30 days of free Printify Premium so you get the better pricing for a month without having to pay for it. And during that month, you can decide whether it makes sense for your shop and you want to keep it or if you want to cancel and go back to the standard free account. All right, so let's check the retail pricing for this. So 1130 and 450 is going to give us a total cost of 1580. So that's what we'll bring over to our Allura Etsy fee calculator. 1580 and I'm just going to take a guess here at 2499. We'll see how that comes out. 2499 would yield us a profit margin of 25% or $6.37. That's pretty close to what I would call acceptable level of profit for an embroidered hat, but you could certainly go a little bit higher than that, try to get a little closer to 30%. So if we just went $1 higher, I think that would get us to, yep, 28% profit margin, 727. Now there are two other things we always consider here. One would be if you regularly place your listings on sale for say 15% off, if you run one of those sales frequently, you can certainly set up your regular prices to be a bit higher so that when they are frequently on sale, you're still getting that 27, 28% profit margin. And this is the total price that we need to get for that profit margin. So if you don't do free shipping and you want want to charge, say, $3 or $4 for shipping, then you can back down the list price by the same amount. And the pricing for the Pom Pom Beanie is pretty close to the same, but a little bit higher. It is $12.32 on Printify Premium with the same $4.50 shipping in the U.S. And $16.82 would be the total cost for these on Printify Premium. So let's just figure that one out. So, so if we leave it at $25.99 for a moment, that's going to bring us down to 24% profit margin because th these cost about a dollar more. So, so these you might be looking at more like $27.99 as far as the total price you want to get. That would get you to a 29% profit margin or $8. That's where I'd be pretty comfortable with these. And so again, if you want to do $3 to $4 shipping charge, you just back down the list price by that much. And I think in both cases, uh, those should be fairly competitive prices. I don't think that is pricing itself out of the market by any means, especially because they are embroidered. Embroidery tends to command a slightly higher price than things that are printed. And keep in mind, if you do personalized products at all, if you do initials or names or something like that in the design, then you could certainly even bump that profit margin up a little bit more. So what about niche ideas for selling your embroidered hats? Well, you can certainly look to your existing designs that are already selling on things like t-shirts, sweatshirts, mugs, things like that. And ask yourself, would this design translate well into a hat? And of course, you're going to probably have to simplify the design a little bit unless it's already just a text-based design. If it is a text-based design you have that's selling well, there's a decent chance it might sell on hats. And so that can be a good starting place. And if you're looking for niches that might lend themselves to the ability to create a hat as well as designs for other products like a t-shirt to go along with the hat or a sweatshirt to go along with the hat or a mug or something like that, then you just need to adjust those keyword phrases when you're doing your research. And one thing to keep in mind is you don't always need to create a design that is an exact match for the keyword as long as it's related. Of course, you don't want to create something totally unrelated, but here's just one example. The very short search phrase PNW hat, which stands for Pack Northwest has an estimated 581 monthly searches on Etsy according to the Sales Samurai Chrome extension. And right now it's got just under 2,000 search results. Now the actual letters PNW are trademarked. There's actually a whole bunch of trademarks that use just PNW, but that doesn't mean you can't use that as a tag and have a design that doesn't say PNW, if that makes sense. So let's just look at a couple examples here. Some of these are using PNW and I have no way of knowing if they are the trademark holder for that specific graphic or just the letters PNW. But if we ignore those, there are a lot of other designs that literally say the whole words Pacific Northwest. And there are some that are very basic graphic uh, designs that don't even have the words Pacific Northwest or PNW at all in them. They're simple, you know, Northwest theme designs like this one here. That's just mountains with a stream in it. Or here's one that's the shape of Oregon with, you know, a sunrise in it. And that one, I can tell you right now, this one here is a, an embroidery print on demand product. I know this thumbnail. This is one of the default thumbnails. So also notice one other thing here. Page one is littered with regular baseball style caps and not too many beanies. Now we didn't search for beanie, we just searched for hat. But that could mean that there's a little bit of a gap here, maybe some opportunity to come up with a few related but not trademarked designs on beanies 
beanie hats that would fit in this niche and be different than what a lot of these search results are. Another one that I stumbled across that has some potential to be created as part of a group of products like t-shirts or sweatshirts that would have the same design on them is actually the bride and bridesmaid matching themed products. And this one specifically, the phrase bride tribe, doesn't have a super high search volume. It's actually under 100 for several more specific search phrases. This specific one is one where uh, like the bride would have a hat that says bride and then all the bridesmaids would have a hat that says tribe on it. And you can see some of these are actually beanie hats that are embroidered and some are regular hats. So this is one that I thought it was just a good example of how you might be able to find a niche where you could create the hats as well as the t-shirts or the sweatshirts or the hoodies. And they would basically all have the exact same design on them without any difference. So there you have it, just a couple ideas to get the ball rolling. And I do think that the product quality is definitely up to par for your print-on-demand shop. The two samples that I got, I was very pleased with. Let me know in the comments if you already sell embroidered hats in your Etsy print-on-demand shop and how those products do for you. Or if you have any questions about any of the information on the designing process for embroidery or for the hat specifically. Also, let me know if you'd like to see a future video about the other styles of embroidered hats that are available. Do me a favor and hit that like like button if you found this video helpful so that YouTube can show it to more people and hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when I come out with future POD Insights videos. Thanks everybody. See you next time.